Two of the best selling baby food brands by Nestle in India contain high levels of added sugar. While such products are sugar free in the United Kingdom, Germany and Switzerland and other developed nations according to an investigation by Public Eye. The report said that Nestle, which is the world's largest consumer goods company, adds sugar and honey to infant milk and cereal products in several countries. A violation of international guidelines aimed at preventing obesity and chronic diseases. Violations were found only in Asian, African and Latin American countries. However, a Nestle India Limited spokesperson told to a news agency, profit that the company has reduced the total amount of added sugars in its infant cereal portfolio by 30% over the past 5 years and it continues to review and reformulate products to reduce them further. They believe in the nutritional quality of the products for early childhood and prioritize using high quality ingredients. it said in a statement finding showed that in india all 15 cereal baby products contain an average of nearly 3 grams of sugar per serving the same product is being sold with no added sugar in germany and the uk while in ethiopia and thailand it contains nearly 6 grams the study said The amount of added sugar is often not even disclosed in the nutritional information available on the packaging of these kinds of products. While Nestle prominently highlights the vitamins, minerals and other nutrients contained in its products using idealizing imagery. It is not transparent when it comes to added sugar. Nestle sold over 20,000 crore worth of Cerulec products in India in 2022. Experts say that adding sugar which is highly addictive to baby products is a dangerous and unnecessary practice. This is a big concern. Sugar should not be added to foods offered to babies and young children because it is unnecessary and highly addictive, says Rodrigo Viana, epidemiologist and professor at the Department of Nutrition of the Federal University of Paraiba in Brazil. Children get used to the sweet taste and start looking for more sugary foods, starting a negative cycle that increases the risk of nutrition-based disorders in adult life. This include obesity and other chronic non-communicable diseases such as diabetes or high blood pressure, he said. Bureau report, big news. Jailed former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on Friday alleged that his wife Bushra Bibi was given food laced with toilet cleaner. He also claimed that her health deteriorated as she was battling a stomach infection daily after consuming poisoned food. Bushra Bibi was recently convicted in a corruption case as well as in the case of her illegal marriage with Imran Khan and is currently held in detention at their Bani Gala residence. in the suburbs of Islamabad Imran Khan a former cricketer said Shaukat Khanum Hospital chief medical officer Dr Ashim Yusuf had recommended conducting Bushra Bibi test at Shifa International Hospital in Islamabad he alleged that jail authorities were adamant about conducting the test at the Pakistan Institute of Medical Science the express tribune reported During the hearing the judge asked Imran Khan to avoid holding press conferences while in custody. In response the former prime minister contended that he engages with journalists regularly as his statements are misquoted. Imran Khan who has been convicted in several cases requested that he should be allowed a 10 minute interaction with the media after the hearings. On April 17th Imran Khan alleged that Pakistan Army Chief General Asim Munir was directly responsible for the imprisonment of Bushra Bibi. He also threatened General Munir if anything happened to his wife. General Asim Munir is directly involved in the sentence awarded to his wife. He said while adding that the judge who convicted her was forced to make the decision. He further said if anything happens to his wife he will not leave Asim Munir he will not leave Asim Munir as long as he is alive he will expose his unconstitutional and illegal steps bureau report big news 
एक्टर एंड मिस वर्ल्ड 2017 मानुषी चिल्लर हु फीचर्ड इन बड़े मिया छोटे मिया गिव अ शाउट आउट टू रश्मिका मंदाना रोल इन संदीप रेडी वांगस एनिमल During a recent interview Chiller expressed her wish to play Mandana's character in the blockbuster film. During an interview with Zoom Manushi was inquired about the rumors of her being offered the role of Geetanjali Rashmika's character in Animal. She said she wished she knew about these rumors. When father asked whether she would have portrayed Tripti Dimdi and Rashmika's character Manushi said that she loves Sandeep Reddy Vanga. Both are really interesting roles, Rashmika Mandana's and Tripti Dimri's characters. But she loved Rashmika's character because in this whole world where men were fighting each other, she really stood her ground. Manushi continued, she really confronted a man, she held him accountable. She said, I don't care about who you are, what you are doing outside and how dangerous you might be, but you are my husband and I will hold you accountable. Her character had an arc. I felt that it was such a good opportunity and she did a great job. So that's a role I would have loved to do. On the work front, Manushi was last seen in Akshay Kumar and Tiger Shroff's Bade Mia Chote Mia. The film released during Eid 2024. Irrespective of the stellar star cast, the film tanked at the box office. It received negative reviews from viewers and critics alike. Directed by Ali Abbas Jafar, the film also stars Prithvi Raj Sukumaran, Alia F and Sonakshi Sinha in supporting roles. Bureau report, big news. The government's move comes after Hong Kong banned the sale of two brands in the country, MDH and Everest, for allegedly containing a cancer-causing pesticide. The Food Safety Regulator Food Safety and Standards Authority of India on Monday ordered quality checks on products of popular Indian spice brands MDH and Everest Group following allegations of them containing a cancer-causing pesticide, Reuters reported citing a senior official. According to the report, the inspections will test for the presence of ethylene oxide, a harmful pesticide unfit for human consumption and whose long-term exposure can cause cancer. The government's move comes hours after Hong Kong banned the sale of the two brands in the country, MDH and Everest, which have been in the Indian kitchens as a primary brand choice of spices. claiming that they detected the presence of carcinogenic pesticide ethylene oxide in several spice mixes according to the center for food safety of the government of the hong kong special administrative region they had collected samples of 3 of mdh prepacked spice products madras curry powder sambar masala powder and curry powder and everest groups fish curry masala for testing under its routine food surveillance program when it detected the presence of the pesticide the cfs further instructed the concerned vendors in simsa shui city to stop selling those products and remove them from their shelves the international agency for research on cancer has classified ethylene oxide as a group 1 carcinogen According to the pesticide residue in food regulations a food for human consumption containing pesticide residue may only be sold if consumption of the food is not dangerous or prejudicial to the health an offender is liable to a maximum fine of 50000 and imprisonment for 6 months upon conviction the hong kong authorities said in a notice Following this Singapore also directed the importer of the spices to initiate a recall of product those who have consumed the implicated products and have concerns about their health should seek medical advice consumers may contact their point of purchase for inquiries the Singapore food agency said Notably MDH company founded by Dharmapal Gulati in 1959 and Everest founded by Vadilal Shah have been exporting to stick have been exporting to several places including the US Europe UK and the Middle East bureau report big news Salman Khan announced his next project on Eid this year and it is titled Sikandar On Thursday the makers announced that Rashmika Mandana has been cast in the film opposite Salman welcoming the fabulous Rashmika Mandana to star opposite Salman Khan in Sikandar 
can't wait for their on-screen magic to unfold on E2025. Meanwhile, an excited Rashmika Mandana on her Instagram story wrote on Thursday morning, You guys for a long time have been asking me for the next update and here it is, Sikandar. I am truly grateful and honored to be a part of Sikandar. The closest Salman Khan and Rashmika Mandana came to sharing screen space was on the TV reality show Big Boss 16 hosted by the superstar. Rashmika attended the show with co-star Nina Gupta. Rashmika was on the show for the promotion of her debut Hindi film Goodbye. Salman Khan has teamed up with A.R. Murugados for Sikandar. A.R. Murugados announced the news on his Instagram handle and he wrote Eid Mubarak. Immerse yourself in the magic of Sikandar as it unfolds on the big screen Eid 2025. Sajid Nadiawala presents Salman Khan in and as Sikandar, releasing in cinema Eid 2025. Salman Khan was last seen in Tiger 3 with Katrina Kaif and Imran Hashmi last year. The film was directed by Manish Sharma. The actor also made a cameo appearance in Shah Rukh Khan's Pathan last year. The actor also starred in Kisi Ka Bhai Kisi Ki Jaan. Salman Khan was seen as the host for the 17th season of the TV reality show Big Boss, which was won by Munawar Faruqi. Bureau Report, Big News. Do you love to binge on packaged baked goods and snacks, fizzy drink, sugary cereals and ready to eat or heat foods? Beware, because it can cut short your lifespan and raise the risk of early death. According to a 30-year-long study published in the journal The BMG on Thursday, the risk is because ultra-processed foods often contain colors, emulsifiers, flavors and other addictives and are typically high in energy. This can lead to poor health and raising the risk of obesity, diabetes and hypertension which can further raise the risk of cardiovascular diseases and cancer. For the study, an international team of researchers including the US, Brazil and China tracked the long-term health of 74,563 female registered nurses from 11 US states between 1984 and 2018 and 39,501 male health professionals from all 50 US states. The results revealed that eating an average of 7 servings per day of ultra-processed foods caused a 4% higher risk of total deaths, a 9% higher risk of other deaths including an 8% higher risk of neurodegenerative deaths. The rate of death from any cause among the participants in this group was 1536 per 1 lakh person. The study involving extensive data collection and analysis from two large cohorts of health professionals identified over 48,000 deaths during the observation period. Notably, those with a higher intake of ultra-processed foods exhibited a 4% higher chances of total mortality, a 9% higher risk of death from various causes including neurodegenerative diseases. Also, if you eat meat, poultry and seafood-based ready-to-eat products, then this is for you because it showed the strongest risk of early death followed by sugar-sweetened and artificially sweetened beverages, dairy-based desserts and ultra-processed breakfast food. Even though this is an observational study, so no firm conclusions can be drawn among cause and effect. The findings provide support for limiting the consumption of certain types of ultra-processed food for long-term health. According to the researchers, future studies are warranted to improve the classification of ultra-processed foods and confirm our findings in other populations. Sugary drinks, packaged snacks, ready-to-eat meals and many fast food items are the foods that have been long under scrutiny for their potential health implications. The study tracking the health of over 1 lakh participants for several decades, it revealed a notable association between increased consumption of such foods and elevated mortality rates. Albert Einstein was one of the greatest scientific minds of the 20th century. The Nobel Prize winning physicist is known for his theory of relativity, which has become one of the two pillars of modern physics. He also gave several other scientific principles that made his brain special. So special that when he died in Princeton Hospital on April 18, 1955, the pathologist on call, Thomas Harvey, stole it. Harvey not only preserved, photographed and measured it but also cut the brain into 240 pieces. According to the BBC, the pathologist created 12 sets of 200 slides containing tissue samples indexed to the blocks. The brain had been missing for 23 years when an editor dispatched his reporter named Stephen Levy to find the illustrious organ. 
Levy found that Harvey had left Princeton Medical Center and eventually tracked him down to Wichita, Kansas. I told him I'm writing a story about Einstein's brain. The first thing he said was, I really can't help you with that. He wasn't eager to talk, Levy was quoted as saying by the BBC. But when he eventually met Harvey, Levy got to know that the pathologist had indeed studied Einstein's brain. Levy asked for a picture and Harvey showed him a beer cooler. The blocks of brain were lying inside. Describe the contents of one of the jars, Levy said in an article published in New Jersey Monthly, a conch shell shaped mass of wrinkled material the color of clay after firing, a fist-sized chunk of grayish line substance, that apparent consistency of sponge, and in a separate pouch, a mass of pinkish-white string resembling bloated dental floss. A second larger jar contained dozens of rectangular transculent blocks the size of golden bugs' peanut chews. After the discovery, Harvey became famous in 1985. He published the first study of Einstein's brain, claiming that it had an abnormal proportion of two types of cells, neurons and glial, that fixed neurons into place and kept them supplied with oxygen and nutrients. More studies were conducted that claimed Einstein's brain could help uncover the neurological underpinnings of intelligence, according to National Geographic. But many experts, including Terence Hines, a professor of psychology at Pace University, debunked these studies, dubbing them nonsense. Although the brain's scientific significance remains debatable, its story has been culturally productive, spawning a novel, a comic book and even a play by Nick Pine, inspired by Harvey's story. Bureau Report, Big News. Godzilla vs Kong The New Empire broke box office expectation as it opened at Indian theaters on March 29th after amassing rupees 25.5 crore within the first two days of its release the film maintained momentum on its third day Sunday according to an industry tracking site the Warner Bros film earned rupees 13.50 crore on Sunday thus bringing its opening weekend collection to rupees 39 crore net in India the MonsterVerse film has crossed the box office collection of last week's biggest Indian release, Karina Kapoor, Tabu, and Kriti Sanon's Kriyu, and Prithvi Raj Shukumaran's Adujivitam. While Kriyu opening weekend collection stands at Rs 29.25 crore, Adujivitam, which released on March 28, has earned Rs 30.10 crore net in India in four days. Made on a budget of Rs 135 million, Godzilla vs Kong The New Empire has globally earned 114 million rupees as per a variety report. The producer of the film Godzilla vs Kong, which was released in 2021 when the world was still grappling with the coronavirus induced restrictions, made 474 million worldwide. Now it remains to be seen if Godzilla vs Kong The New Empire will surpass the milestone in the coming days. The official synopsis of the film reads, The epic battle continues, legendary pictures, cinematic monster verse follows up the explosive showdown of Godzilla vs Kong with an all-new adventure that pits the almighty Kong and the fearsome Godzilla against a colossal undiscovered threat hidden within our world, challenging their very existence and our own. Godzilla vs Kong The New Empire delves further into the histories of these titans and their origins as well as the mysteries of Skull Island and beyond, while uncovering the mythic battle that helped forge these extraordinary beings and tied them to mankind forever. On a review reads, Godzilla vs Kong is a collab you would never have expected to deliver on such a big scale. The climax is a riot and there will be a lot of hooting and cheering when you watch your favorite creatures battle it out. Definitely one of the strongest competitors in the franchise. Godzilla vs Kong is a must watch, someone said. Godzilla vs Kong The New Empire is helmed by Adam Wingard. Bureau Report, Big News. The Met Office on Monday issued a heat wave alert for the Western District of Bengal. From April 3rd to 5th, Purulia, Bakura, West Pardaman, West Midnapur, and Jhargram are likely to be in the grip of a heat wave. 
Calcutta will continue to be hot and sultry and uncomfortable conditions will prevail at least till Friday, a Met official said. The maximum temperature in Calcutta on Monday was 37.1 degrees Celsius, three notches above normal. The minimum was 27.12 degrees above normal. The day temperature in Calcutta will go up in the next few days, said a Met official. A bulletin issued by the Met department warned against prolonged heat exposure and advised wearing lightweight, light-colored clothes. Recognize the signs of heat stroke, heat rash or heat cramps such as weakness, dizziness, headache, nausea, sweating and seizures, the bulletin added. It advised avoiding direct sunlight and increasing the frequency and length of breaks in between outdoor activities. Due to the prevailing mainly dry westerly wind over the region, heat wave condition, hot and discomfort weather is very likely to occur over the district of South Bengal during April 1st to 5th, 2024, said a Med Bulletin issued on Monday. The day temperature is likely to rise by 2 to 4 degrees Celsius in the South Bengal district in the next three days. And the maximum temperature is going to be above normal by 4 to 5 degrees in the western district of South Bengal from April 3rd to 5th, the bulletin says. Heatwave condition likely to prevail at one or two places over Purulia, Bakura, West Bardhaman, West Midnapur, Jhargram, district of South Bengal, the bulletin says. A heat wave is declared when the mercury breaches the 40 degree mark and the maximum temperature is at least 5 notches above normal. Usually in April, the maximum temperature in Calcutta is 35.4 degrees Celsius. There is a possibility of the maximum touching 38 degrees in the next few days. There is not enough moisture in the air to trigger a thunderstorm, which can bring temporary relief from the current condition. For a thunderstorm to occur, there has to be a system over the Bay of Bengal or the Choronakpur Plateau, none of which exist now, a Met official said. Bureau Report, Big News.